Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. Today we're going to be talking about equivalent fractions and specifically getting fractions down into lowest terms. So remember we talked about fractions yesterday or in the previous lesson we talked about fractions and we showed this picture. Now something you may have noticed is that on this side here, the blue half circle, which representing by 1 over 2, if this circle were divided into two equal parts, the blue section would represent one out of those two parts. What do we notice about these ones that are one out of four and one out of four? You may have noticed that if you take those two parts out of four, they're exactly equal to one half. Did you notice that? This is equal to half of the circle, one fourth and one fourth. So if we have two fourths, it's equal to one half. It means exactly the same thing. It represents the same amount of space, represents the same part out of the whole. It's just written in a different way. And with fractions, there are so many different ways to write the same thing. We could have had 4 out of 8 parts, or 8 out of 16, or 16 out of 32 parts, and it all represents that you're talking about half of the whole object. So if we have so many different ways to write the same exact thing. Let's talk about how we can actually um, make sure that they are written in the most efficient way, in a consistent way. So equivalent fractions are fractions that represent the same thing, but they're written using different numbers. You may see that vocabulary, equivalent fractions, you'll probably hear that. Equivalent fractions, they're fractions that are equal or equivalent. And lowest terms, I used that vocabulary just a second ago, we're going to write a fraction in lowest terms. And what that means is that we write it in a way that the numerator and the denominator of the fraction have no common factors other than one. All right? Let's take a look at um, how we actually write a fraction in lowest terms. And because we're writing it from this to lowest terms, we're going to be what we call writing an equivalent fraction. An equal fraction, just the one that's in the lowest terms. So here are the steps. First, we want to list the factors of the smaller number. In this case, 15 is the smaller number, so we're going to list the factors of 15. Factors are the numbers that can be multiplied together to give you 15. So 1 times 15 and 3 times 5. All right, those are all of the factors of 15. The reason I start listing the factors of the smaller number is because next we're going to list the factors of the larger number and try and find all of them that are common. So here are the factors of the larger number, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 10, 15, 30. But the thing is, we only really need to worry about ones that are the same as the smaller one. So anything larger than 15, we really don't even need to list. All right, because we know 30 is not going to be a factor. So we can look through. We have 1 in common. We have 3 in common. 5 is in common. And 15 is in common. Those are the factors that are common. What we want to do is to pick the one that is the largest. And this is known as the greatest common factor. You'll hear that called the GCF, greatest common factor. They'll just list that in capitals, GCF. That's what it's talking about. You list the factors, and you pick the one that's the largest. Then, to reduce this fraction into lowest terms, we will divide both the numerator and the denominator, both the top and the bottom, by 15. So 15 divided by 15 is 1, and 30 divided by 15 is 2. So we end up with 1 half. Now, many of you may have noticed 15 out of 30, that is half. 15 is half of 30. So we can rewrite that as 1 half. These are equivalent fractions. And this one is the fraction in lowest terms. So that is how we write a fraction in lowest terms. You list the factors of the smaller number, check for any common factors, and divide both the numerator and denominator by the greatest common factor. We're going to practice now using all sorts of different numbers. So we're going to follow these exact same steps. Step one, list the factors of 14. We know 1, 2, 7, and 14 are all factors of 14. Because 1 times 14 and 2 times 7 will give us 14. So those are the factors of 14. Now we're going to list the factors of 21. 
1 times 21, 3 times 7, and that's probably it. So we don't even need to list the last one because 21 is larger than 14, so we don't even need that one. So the common factor with these groups is 7. That's the greatest common factor between both of them, so we will take the top and bottom and divide both by 7. 14 divided by 7 is 2, 21 divided by 7 is 3. Our fraction in lowest terms is therefore 2 thirds, 2 over 3. All right, it's an equivalent fraction and it's in lowest terms. This type of work it really does, when we practice it, the more you practice it and see examples, the more helpful this is. 30 is going to have a lot of factors, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 10, 15, and 30. All right, let's make sure I get all of them. All right, so those are all the factors, 1 times 30. You can kind of go on the outside, 1 times 30, 2 times 15, 3 times 10, and 5 times 6. So we can kind of make sure that we've gotten all of them. And now we're going to list the factors of 40. Now 40 is going to have a lot of factors as well because 1, 2, 4, 5, 8, 5 times 8, 4 times 10, 2 times 20, and 1 times 40. All right, hopefully I didn't miss any there. And we're going to identify the largest factor that is common between the two, and in this case it is 10. So now that I've identified the greatest common factor, I'm going to divide both the numerator, numerator divided by 10, denominator divided by 10, 30 divided by 10 is 3, 40 divided by 10 is 4. All right, this is actually, um, if you ever notice that one um, fraction ha ends both numbers in 0, you can just cancel out the zeros, which is essentially dividing by 10. And then it might not be in lowest terms, but it's a lot easier to list the factors of 3 and the factors of 4 than it is to list the factors of 30 and 40. So that's a shortcut you can use, but you can also do it this way, list out all the factors, find the greatest common factor, and solve. Let's go on to our next one. Ooh, this will be nice because 13 is what we call a prime number. In other words, it has only the factors of 1 and 13. So 39. Well, it has the factors of 1 and 3 times 13 and 39. We really only need to check and see, is 39 divisible by 13? Because that's the only factor that could possibly be common with 13. All right, so when you've got a really short list here, it might be quicker instead of listing all the factors of 39 and maybe I missed one or something like that, instead you could just say, is it divisible by 13? That's the only number we're worried about. If it is not divisible by 13, if they don't have any common factors, then it's already in lowest terms. All right, but this one does have a common factor of 13, so I'm going to divide numerator divided by 13, denominator divided by 13, and I will get one third as my final fraction in lowest terms. All right, in this last one, what I've done is I've put together one that has a negative in it. Um, negative numbers are still regular numbers. You are just going to find factors of negative 4 instead of positive 4. But really, we're going to list 1, 1 times 4, 2 times 2. Those are the only factors of 4. And 10 has 1, 2, 5, and 10. So what we can do is say that our common factor is 2. 2 is common between both of them. We know that 2 will go into negative 4. Watch what happens when we take the numerator of negative 4 and we divide it by 2. We will get negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. So we still keep a negative fraction at the end negative 2 over 5, the negative really doesn't change the way we do things. 
we don't have to list negative 1 times positive 4, negative 4 times positive 1, 2 times negative 2. We don't have to list all of the positive and negative factors. So putting a negative in there really does not do anything except that our final answer is going to have the same sign. All right? So that is how we do this. We list the factors small of the smallest one, check for common factors from the larger one, and divide both the numerator by that greatest common factor and the denominator by the greatest common factor. And that's how we get fractions in lowest terms. So I think we're getting the hang of it. A lot of practice keeps us getting quicker and quicker. The, the more you practice, the more you'll start seeing those common factors a little bit more quickly. Good luck and have a great day.